Earnings season is in full swing, and while some early indications point toward the impact of the shutdown uh, having bottomed out and being behind us, should we expect the pain to linger in the second half of the economy? Let's talk about that and how to allocate capital right now with the founder of the Bonson Group. David Bonson is here. David, it's great to see you this weekend. Thank you for being here. First, let me get your take on the earnings season so far. What have we learned? Yeah, we're so early, and it's mostly been financial companies, and that's always interesting because the banks are going to be on the front line of credit growth, credit demand, and then on the risk side, their loan provisions, loan loss provisions, and really most of the numbers. There are a couple um, exceptions, Wells Fargo primarily, but for the most part, it was a pretty good week for the banks, at least in terms of from the low baseline that expectations were set. Would you buy the banks at these levels? Do you think that uh, their values are attractive? Well, we would buy J.P. Morgan uh, almost at any level because we believe they're always a very well-run, strong balance sheet, very diversified company. And because of our focus on dividend growth and our belief in J.P. Morgan's perpetual ability to grow their dividend, then we are buyers of JP. For some of the other banks, I think investors have to be willing to take a little bit of risk. None of the other banks have as strong of a capital markets franchise combined with traditional bank like JP. Okay. So do you think that the economy gets better second half of the year? Are you expecting growth? Yeah, the economy most certainly gets better second half of the year. The question is how much better and how quickly. And so those V-shaped versus U-shaped debates, I think, are getting a little tired because what we're seeing is that it's uh, being manifested very differently in all kinds of different industries, different parts of the economy. And so, uh, unfortunately, from a social and cultural standpoint, the pain of this recession is really concentrated. It's always concentrated concentrated in lower income segments. But this one in particular, because that's where the bulk of that unemployment came from. So our belief is that at whatever point you can really start to get some economic reopening with more momentum, um, then you're going to see V-shape responses in the moment. Yeah. It's the extension into next year. Yeah. And that's where I was encouraged this week by small mm-hmm. business optimism on the NFIB number and on industrial production. I don't know if it's going to be sustained or not, okay. but that business investment is going to be key, Maria, into 2021. Let me get your take real quick as we look ahead to the second half. The election is there. This week we did hear more about Joe Biden's economic plans. He wants to raise taxes. He wants to spend $2 trillion on a, uh, on a green plan. But there There are some on Wall Street who believe that Elizabeth Warren is going to be one of his most important economic voices, whether or not she's Treasury Secretary, even if she stays in the Senate. She's got the voice on where things go economically. You wrote a whole book about her. What's your take on what she brings to the table? Should Joe Biden win this election? Well, here's what I hope is the case and what I right now think is the case. But we could get to a point where what I hope and what I believe have to diverge. And I pray that doesn't happen. I really hope that he's going to campaign pretending as if Bernie and Elizabeth and this whole camp of far left progressivism and and really in Warren's case, when it comes to financials, it's just incredible extremism. What it means, the rhetoric around private equity and around bank regulation is bad enough. But some of those policies, particularly in a time of economic vulnerability, would be devastating and not just to capital markets and not just to wealthy people. I mean, it would be devastating throughout the economy. I think Biden's in a political position where he has to try to uh, appeal to that group. They came out of a tough primary and so forth. And yet I really kind of wonder, would he actually be a president more like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, or would he be a president more like, I hate to say it, but even Barack Obama, let alone a Bill Clinton? You make a really important point. We'll see if this is just getting bullied by the extreme left and, and what he actually comes out with. David, you wrote the book on it, and we 